Welcome in Irish Nation to the Golden Dawn, Coach Reardon and Coach's Corner for Ursuline Football. I'm Tim Corso. Thanks again for joining me. Week three heading up this week, Coach, and you have Farrell, a team you played a couple a couple years ago. And coming off last week's big win against Hartley, it was a well-rounded win. And how encouraging was that to see, especially defensively after week one, and just kind of see a full effort in all three phases basically working out for you guys. Yeah, I thought our guys played really well. Um, you know, we have a ton of respect for Hartley. We had a great game against them several years ago. Excuse me. A little lower scoring than that. Yeah, uh, you know, so, so their offense is very challenging to prepare for. They do a really good job of formation. It's non traditional compared to what we see right. most weeks. And uh, so I thought our kids defensively played really, really good for the first half. Uh, yeah. Kicking game kind of felt like we dominated, to, to be honest. Um, you know, we had a field, a long field goal, 38 yarder. Um, <clears throat> Which is top ten all time in person history. Um, you know, we we got a surprise on side. We, we we got a couple of two point conversions and um, did a really good job that way. And um, you know, so so that brings us to offense on the offensive side. We had five different guys score, which is really really nice. And uh, you know, we, we we feel like we we have good skill players. And uh, you know, the more that we can evolve all of them or a bunch of them from week to week, you know, makes us that much tougher to defend. And, uh, you know, we, I, I think we were able to show that the other night. You talk about the special teams a little bit. Of course, you have that 15-yard penalty in your favor, but you guys passed midfield kicking off. And we know you like to surprise teams occasionally. Normally with onsides. So how much was kind of momentum and just the – what overall factored into that decision? Because that ended up working out for you guys recovering that. Yeah, the biggest part of the thing there was the field position. You know, we were going to be kicking on, kicking off on the plus 45 yard line after that 15 yard penalty against them. So, you know, if you hit an onside and don't get it there, it, it's, um, you know, it's still in your favor from, you know, it, yeah, from a field position standpoint. So even if it goes 10 or 15 yards, it's still n n not a big loss, net loss from a field position perspective. So, you know, we, we, we took a shot at it and, um, Anthony hit a really good kick, and, and, and it worked out in our favor. And you can certainly tell that Washington won special teams from, because they did not get anywhere near you guys for the most part. Yeah. And um, are you expecting to see a lot more of that throughout the season, or are you thinking that might just be depending on how you guys do from the week before? Yeah, I think it, from week to week, it, it depends on the philosophy of, uh, of the other team and, and their coaching staff. Um, you know, we've shown the ability to, to have some big returns, and, and it hasn't always been the same guy. So, um you know, if a team decides to kick it away from our deep returners, that means they're kicking it shorter. Again, it's probably going to work out in our favor from a field position standpoint. If that's the case, um, you know, maybe you don't have to work as hard for the yards as if, you, if they kick it to the five-yard line and you get a big return. But, um, you know, we'll take it either way. We, we, we take a lot of pride in our return game. And, you know, Devontae and Jai Keys and Ray Javy and Luke Kolar and, and – you know, we have a lot of guys who have the ability to make plays with the ball in their hands. And, um, you know, so so either way, if, if they choose to kick it short, we're happy. If they choose to kick it deep, we have a chance for a big play if one of those guys get it and our guys up front block. All right, and we talked about this last week and how they like to run the ball a lot and how week one went with running the ball. So how much of an emphasis was that coming in the week two with the defense against the run, especially with the team? And if they can control the line of scrimmage, it could be a long day, but it wasn't. Yeah, we were able to get um, a three and out on the opening possession, which was big, and, and um, we got some pressure on their punter and forced a short punt. Um, so with that, uh, you know, that was a big, again, field position situation for us. It, it put our offense in a really good situation. Um, and, and there were a couple other possessions throughout the course of the game where we got three and outs. And um, when you're able to do that against a team like Hartley, it, it, it really helps you. And then our offense was being efficient, so, so we were able to get up by a couple scores. And, uh, you know, they're not necessarily built to come from behind from a large deficit because, you know, they're a grinded out three and four yards of pop type, type uh, football team. And their big playability comes – by grinding it out, and then they break a tackle, and, and, and they, they have, the whole game. yeah, and they have good backs who can take the distance if they break a tackle. But again, I thought our kids did a really good job. Um, 
we did give up one big long touchdown run. Fortunately for us, it was called back because of a holding. But uh, you know, outside of that play, our kids did a really good job, and they, they didn't have any plays over 20 yards, and that was a big point of that emphasis throughout the uh, the whole week leading up to the game. All right, and you talked about the offense, and of course, on that onside kick, you guys didn't end up capitalizing some self inflicted wounds, but you still scored 41 points. Yeah. So how confident does that make you in your offense? You talked about how good they've been, and that you can can make a couple mistakes and you're still scoring a lot of points because of how dynamic and versatile they are. Yeah, again, the, the biggest thing from my perspective is there's five different guys. Right. And, and, and that's five different guys playing different positions that forces people to game plan for. And, uh, you know, we feel like if, if somebody – does something schematically that takes away Devontae Taylor, that Jai Keese or Ray J.B. or Tyran or Amir, you know, any one of those guys can make someone pay in the passing game if they're focusing on one guy. Um, Joe Baylog had a good game. Vinny Fecco came in and, and had some really good runs for us. Um, Marcus Patterson came in and had some good runs for us. So, you know, the fact that all those guys are contributing, and, and I didn't even mention D.C. Farrell, um, you know, that, that, that puts defense coordinators in the bind because there's a lot of guys who, who, who can make you pay if you focus too much on someone else. Great. And we touched on Farrell, and now I'm talking about them this week. played a couple of years ago. It was a great game down there. They had all the, the momentum because it was a community of you know, the turf field and everything. Mm-hmm. Got the win, and this is a team that's always very similar, a lot of speed, a lot of athleticism. They like to be in a dogfight because they always are fighting no matter what. They're state champions from a couple of years ago, so they know how to get it done. So what's it going to take to go in there, get another ups, not, I'd say ups of another road win, and take care of business against Farrell? Yeah, so first of all, they, they, they have a very okay. young football community and tradition. Um, they support their team. I, I, I got a chance to you know, for several days you know, scouting. For right. Years. Playing over there a couple of years ago and um, had a chance to watch them live against Hickory a couple of weeks ago. They, we played on Friday, they played on Saturday, and you know it's standing room only. They, they come out and support the team, and um, so we know that every that their entire community is behind them, and, and, and they have a lot of people pulling for them and supporting them, and that speaks a lot about their community and, and how they feel about their football team. Um, so there's that. The, then what they do on the field. They're a very dangerous football team. That They have um, a, a bunch of guys who have the ability to make make plays with the ball when it's in their hands. And uh, they, they have a phenomenal tailback this year that, that, that uh, has almost 80 touches in two games, uh, over 30 rushes in both games, and, you know, caught some passes, have some returns and things like that. So, you know, mid-70s. Touching the ball over two two weeks is, is really impressive, and, and he also plays defense, so it tells you what kind of conditioning right. that he has and they have. And uh, you know, we're expecting a war, and they're an extremely well coached team. You know, the game we played a couple of years ago against them it was one of the most exhausting games I've ever been a part of. It was just it was emotionally draining. I mean, there were so many ups and downs right. throughout the course of the game, and we were fortunate to to come out of there with a victory. But um, you know, I think it it, it it, it spoke very well of, of their team, their philosophy, their coaching, that their kids just – that there were a couple times where we got up by two scores and they didn't quit. They came back, and the next thing you know, it's a one-score game. Or they took the lead, and then we're coming from behind. So, you know, it, one, one thing I know is that they're 0-2 barely. Uh, they, they, they lost two very close games against two very good football teams. And – I, I know that they have high expectations for for, the, for this year's team. I know they're they're you know backed into a corner so to speak right, right now, but I know they're going to come out swinging and uh, with like nothing more than to get a win. Okay, you mentioned the running back, of course, Deshaun Will and John Trey. Both mentioned that right off the bat. Yeah. And that running backs are also going to work behind an offensive line that is going to be facing a defensive line that played well last week. And they are a little smaller in size, and of course, smaller school, but they but they, but they make up for. And their speed because they lack a little bit in like size, but they still got some kids who can push and get a good lean forward on that line. Like all good running backs can follow that line. How important is it going to be to kind of win that battle of the line of scrimmage with that really good running back running behind that line? Yeah, I think it's critical. It, it, it gets, uh, you know, they're going to be on the ball 30 plus times. We have to go really defense. Um, he has ability to who make a play when seemingly there's nothing there and uh, he's shown that a number of times so we need we need to be very gap sound that we have to tackle well and um, 
he has ability to make you miss. He has ability to break tackles, all those things. So we, we have to have a really, really big defensive effort. And, of course, everyone's always talking about crowd noise in college and NFL, but in high school, especially with good communities and strong traditions in the football program, they always get big turnouts, as we do at Ursuline. Farrell obviously always has a big turnout there. They're always loud. They're always making noise for their team. So how is that communication going to factor in when whether it's changing a play or is there anything that you guys have to communicate on the field live in action? Yeah, from an offensive perspective, we, we obviously have, have to have to do a good job before making an adjustment or an audible and, and all those things. But, um, you know, our kids have handled that pretty well over the years. And, and, and you know, knock on wood, it hasn't been too much of an issue. But, um, you know, I know it's going to be a loud atmosphere and it's going to be boisterous and all those things. So we have to manage that the right way. And lastly, you know, we're going on the road. What's your message to the Irish fans to come out and travel and just the kind of what to expect from this team come Friday night? Yeah, I think it's going to be nice weather, and um, you know, it's a it's a 20 minute drive for 20 25 minute drive. It's not too far away, so I'd right. love to have a bunch of support and um, you know try to match their their fans' enthusiasm and uh, get, you know minimize that home field advantage from that standpoint. All right. Well, thank you, Coach. We'll see you on Friday from Farrell. Us at YSN will be there. I'm Tim Corso. This is Coach Dan Reed, Coach's Corner of Ursuline Football. We'll see you Friday night. Thanks to the Golden Dawn once again for sponsoring here on your sports network.